This is Passengers United. The next speaker is Andy Pollack. Hi, Kathy. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello? We can hear you. Okay. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I do apologize. I'm going to make this um, speech brief because I am in a hurry to get somewhere. So, Kathy, two things I'm going to bring up this month. This month. Number one, ballpark. When I was at ballpark a couple weeks ago, I noticed that the one of the platforms has no yellow paint. How is that safe? It's not safe. If somebody could easily fall onto the track. That's the other flaw I'm going to bring up at Floral Park for this month. Okay, next issue at hand is the shutdown. So number one, the main line along with the Hempstead branch should not be shut down this weekend because we have an Islanders game at UBS Arena. I'm calling on John Ledecky to get involved and do something about this. And then second, why is the Port Washington line going to be shut down the weekend of the New York City Marathon? Doesn't make any sense. So that also needs to be rescheduled. And if you're going to have other busing options between Bayside and at least Great Neck, at least cross honor on the Q12 and also cross honor on the N20 team. So that's all I have to say for this month. Thank you very much, everyone. I will speak to you all in an hour at New York City Transit. Our next speaker is Andy Pollack. Thank you, Megan. For the record, my name is Andrew Pollack. Well, Andy Pollack, to be specific. That's P-O-2-L-S-A-C as in Chuck, K as in Kevin. So today, I would like to talk about subway safety. It has been a very, very brutal month alone, just as we speak. Where do we even begin On October 14th, a teenager was shot and killed on the A train in Far Rockaway. On October 17th, an individual was struck and killed by a moving train in Jackson Heights, all because of a fight regarding a cell phone on the tracks. Nobody intervened, and if somebody had intervened, the fight could have at least been taken upstairs. And I know the situation at Jackson Heights very well. There's a lot of police upstairs, and it's a very busy station up there. And then let's go to October 19th. Somebody was stabbed with a kitchen knife on the Upper West Side. And the next day, somebody was stabbed with a samurai sword in Tribeca. This is not acceptable behavior. Our subways are the lifeblood of this city. We need to be reassured by our elected officials that we're going to feel safe on the subway. Right now, the NYPD is already being paid overtime as we speak. The governor clearly did not get her facts straight this past weekend. That is why our organization, Passengers United, is officially declaring a state of emergency in the transit system. And we're calling on TWU Local 100 to declare a safety stand down until there is at least one police or security officer on every subway station platform. So to conclude my remarks, I'm going to say a safer transit system is possible and we have to attain it and we have to do whatever is necessary. Thank you very much for hearing me out, and I expect to speak at the CPOC meeting regarding Queen's Link later this afternoon. Our final speaker is Andy Pollack. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you, Jano. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so good afternoon, everyone. A couple of things. Number one, it seems the Omni rollout is starting to come together for the reduced fare customers. This is excellent news. And I did see on the Omni website that it looks like by the end of this year, the reduced fare Omni cards will be available. So I can't wait to get my hands on one. I've been waiting a very long time for this moment. Okay, the main reason why I wanted to talk to Chair Lieber this afternoon was about Queenslink. So the Queenslink project, I feel, should be supported by Mayor Adams, given that a lot of people in Queens, and especially yours truly, have dealt with the hardships and the inconvenience of dealing with the overcrowded Q52, Q53 select bus. I think this is going to save a lot of people time throughout the central corridor of Woodhaven Boulevard in Queens. And again, I really wish the mayor would support this project. And 
There is one more thing I want to discuss regarding Grand Central Madison. So hopefully most of you have seen the newspaper articles in Newsday and Daily News. In Newsday, they mentioned that there may not be a significant increase in service, according to a Newsday Watchdog article that was published yesterday. And in this morning's Daily News, they claimed that a project in Sunnyside was shortchanged because of Grand Central. So when it's time to negotiate the capital budget for 2024, sometime next year, we need to discuss that Sunnyside project because I think it'll save a lot of people time in Sunnyside, Long Island City trying to get into Midtown Manhattan. So that's pretty much it, Jano. Thank you for letting me speak this afternoon, and I expect to speak to the committees again in November. Thank you.